Consider doing your work 100 meters under the water, where it is hostile and there is no sunlight and it can get very cold. Your whole free time is spent breathing a combination of gases that impairs your ability to talk and constantly drains your body's heat, leaving you feeling cold all the time. This is how you spend all your time outside of work. Before your next shift starts and it's time to re-enter the abyss, you can rest here while eating a meal that is supplied through a small hatch or sleeping for a little while. Now picture yourself enduring this for weeks or even months at a time, unable to leave your small and closed environment without meeting a certain horrifying demise. Welcome to the bizarre twilight world of saturation diving, one of the riskiest and highest paying professions in the world. Saturation diving, an approach that was created as a part of the US Navy Sea Lab program in the middle of the 1960s, enables people to live and operate at great depths for lengthy periods of time. It is specifically intended to mitigate the risk of decompression sickness or the bends. Nitrogen slowly dissolves in a diver's body as they breathe compressed air at depth. If they then rise to the top too quickly, the pressure drop might allow this nitrogen to leave the solution and form microscopic bubbles, which can result in agonizing joint pain, strokes, paralysis, and even death. Divers must carefully climb to the surface in order to prevent this, stopping periodically for decompression so that the nitrogen may be safely and gradually removed from their body. This strategy, however, becomes impractical for lengthy, deep dives like those required in the offshore oil business since divers would have to spend a lot more time decompressing than actually working during each shift. Decompression would take more than 50 hours after a dive lasting longer than an hour at a depth below 100 meters, for instance. Instead, with saturation diving, the divers work continuously under pressure, spending their downtime in a diving chamber pressured to their working depth and traveling to and from the task site in a pressurized diving bell known as a transfer capsule. This approach is founded on the idea that after a given period of time, a diver's body gets totally saturated with nitrogen and cannot absorb any more of it, indicating that the necessary decompression time is constant regardless of how long they remain underwater. Decompression sickness is significantly decreased because saturation divers only decompress once at the end of their shift rather than doing many dives and decompressions. The drawback is that it can take this particular decompression up to two weeks to complete. Other risks include nitrogen narcosis, which divers compare to alcohol intoxication. This confusing exhilaration is brought on by inhaling nitrogen under pressure. Likewise, oxygen becomes poisonous at a depth of about 80 meters, necessitating the use of trimix, a gas mixture in which a large portion of the oxygen has been replaced with helium. Having said that, there are issues with it. Helium has weak thermal qualities that drain away body heat and keep divers permanently chilly. It also affects human voice in a way that forces divers to wear electronic discramblers in order to be understood. A grave neurological condition termed as high-pressure nervous syndrome can also be caused by breathing helium at depths lower than 300 meters. However, the Bifford Dolphin catastrophe in 1983 led a crew of four British and Norwegian divers to the startling realization that the greatest threat to saturation diving is the high-pressure environment itself. Aker Engineering of Oslo constructed the semi-submersible offshore oil rig Bifford Dolphin in 1974. It could drill in waters as deep as 460 meters because it weighed 3,000 tons and had a crew of 100 people. The rig was outfitted with an advanced saturation diving system made by the French company Carmex, which allowed for the construction and maintenance of the wellhead at these depths. In the Norwegian part of the North Sea, on November 5, 1983, the drilling rig was in the Frick gas field. While Norwegian divers Bjorn Bergersen and Trolls Hellevik were returning from their duty at 4 a.m., British divers Edwin Coward and Roy Lucas were taking a nap in the dive chamber. William Crammond and Martin Saunders, the diving tenders, raised the capsule from the water and mud it to the dive chamber, allowing Bergersen and Hellevik to join Coward and Lucas by climbing through a little trunk. The divers would typically isolate the chamber and seal off the trunk first allowing the tenders to depressurize the capsule and release it from the airlock. However, William Crammond unlocked the clamp holding the capsule to the trunk before Helivik could close the chamber opening. The outcomes were horrifying and quick.
Crammond was killed and Saunders was seriously hurt as the capsule violently decompressed and blew away from the trunk. Inside the chamber, the pressure suddenly plummeted from nine atmospheres to one in an instant. Helivik was blasted apart while kneeling in the trunk, leaving body parts all over the rig deck. One witness said his liver was complete as if dissected out of the body, and a piece of his spine was discovered on the rig derrick, 10 meters above the chamber. It wasn't much better for the other divers in the room. Coward, Lucas, and Beringson's autopsies revealed white fat masses obstructing their arteries and veins, which were proteins that had cooked and precipitated when their blood flash boiled. Thankfully, all four divers are thought to have passed away quick and painlessly. A further examination came to the conclusion that human error was to blame for the disaster. It is unknown why William Crammond released the clamp before the chamber hatch was closed, but investigators theorized that a fatal misunderstanding may have resulted from a mix of exhaustion and deck noise. William Crammond was killed in the incident. However, another important reason was the saturation diving system itself, which had not been equipped with any interlocks, pressure gauges, or other safety safeguards to prevent the diving chamber from being removed while pressurized. This was in spite of advice from the Norwegian oil and gas regulator DNV. The relatives of the deceased divers did not obtain any financial compensation because this equipment flaw was not noted in the official accident report. The families of the victims, who thought the investigation was a cover-up, came together to join the North Sea Divers Alliance, which eventually succeeded in suing the Norwegian government and winning a payment in 2008, 25 years after the incident. The British petroleum-owned Bifford Dolphin Rig is still in use, and saturation diving, which consistently ranks as one of the riskiest but highest paying jobs in the world, with many divers earning up to $1,400 per day, is still widely used in the offshore oil industry. Even though safety procedures and accident rates have greatly improved since 1983, the Bifford Dolphin event serves as a sobering reminder of the risks that are constantly associated with residing in and working in harsh locations. At present, liquid breathing, as was depicted in the abyss, is one method being investigated to avoid the requirement for saturation diving and decompression at very deep depths. The risk of producing nitrogen bubbles is non-existent because no gas phase comes into contact with the blood and nitrogen is not utilized. It was demonstrated in the 1960s that rats submerged in such a mixture could endure for up to 20 hours. A diver might be able to descend as deep as 3,000 feet 940 meters by using liquid breathing. Research on liquid breathing is still ongoing, with the goal of saving premature infants and patients with severe lung injuries. Are you ready to accept an exceptional wage in exchange for taking on one of the world's most dangerous jobs? Share your thoughts in the comment box below. Please subscribe to Weather Collapse if you want to know more and be updated on the latest news about natural calamities or disasters happening all over the world and don't forget to like today's video. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.